Hello, I'm Maria Burke, an artist and art educator from Oak Ridge Elementary School. I'm Allison Platts, and I'm an art educator at Oak Ridge and Barcroft Elementary Schools. Hi, I'm Sushmita Mazumdar. I'm a writer, an artist, and an art educator. Um, this is my studio, Studio Pause, and please join us in conversation. writing stories from my life, from my childhood in India, for my kids because they were growing up here and I, ha I was so scared that they wouldn't know about other cultures and they wouldn't even know about their mom. So I started writing these stories. But you know, my background is in graphic design and I worked mm -hmm. as an art director for 20 years in advertising. Uh, and so I thought, hey, you know, I can design a book. If I can design an annual report, mm -hmm. I can definitely design a storybook <laughs> for kids, for my four-year-old. And so I started um, making books, and I just taught myself book art, and I started designing these books, and, and I can't draw for nuts, but I started making the books themselves like illustrations, and it was great because I would give it to my son to read as his nighttime mm -hmm. reading. In the morning, he'd either do this or this, <laughs> or then he did this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, I, started it, I started that way, and then I got so into it, I didn't go back to advertising. I started mm. doing that full time. When my daughter was in preschool, I'm like, I'll give it four years and see if it works, if anybody cares. Otherwise, I'll go look for a job. Mm -hmm. And um, it turned out that um, a lot of people were interested because there's so many people who have such varied experiences. And through the art, um, book arts, or you know, these little things that I would do, they felt they could tell those stories mm -hmm. and share. And so I started making books. I started teaching book arts. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was writing, writing, writing. And then I sometimes, some writing doesn't become a book, you know. And so I started painting. And then I put books inside painting. Mm -hmm. And I had paintings inside. And it's just like, it's so amazing how these things just evolve. Seriously, mm -hmm. like a year ago, I didn't know I would be doing this or that mm -hmm. or have my own studio. I used to work out of my basement. <laughs> and my basement got flooded. Then when we redid the whole basement, it was like, you can't be your studio anymore. We spent all this money on it. So <laughs> you're out part of the house, so you're out. Find your own space. And it's just going like that. So do you feel the same way? I mean, yeah. or am I just crazy? No. <laughs> are your, are your um, stories, are they stories from your life? Yeah. Are they, are they passed down well, stories, you know, stories from generations? It's like my dad. It's a story my dad told me from mm -hmm. his life, or my mom, or my story for, that I tell my kids. I've written my kids' stories, you know, for other kids, because mm -hmm. how does an Indian American kid understand their own culture? Mm -hmm. And my daughter was scared of our, like, gods and the temples. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote a book about how she was scared of them, mm -hmm. you know. But the whole idea is um, somebody, you know, because they're handmade books. Even if one person finds it worthwhile, it's worth it for mm -hmm. me, you know. Yeah. It's not like those books that sell in millions. And so I find that... Um, through the art that you know I'm doing with kids, firstly I find because it's writing and art together, you know the mm -hmm. books, they are happy to write, you know because they're actually doing an art project. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now some people, some uh, I do a lot of work with Alexandria City Public Schools, mm. and they're telling me these are literacy workshops. I'm like, yeah. oh really? Because <laughs> that's mm -hmm. not how I planned it. So I find I find art becomes this way for people to get into all these different things yeah. and they don't realize it. And this literacy coach once told me, you're making literacy fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I have to write that down. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So well, it is great. It, they connect really well together because art is telling a story without using words and then you can write along with it. And so it really, it's a good connection between art and literature, I feel like. And I love books too, so I... I, whenever I'm reading, I feel like that's in my head. I can always see oh, what I'm right. reading. So I would like really descriptive writing. And that's kind of like also creating for me, doing the reading. It's also creating images in my mind. Um, so I can see where that would be a really interesting connection for kids to make, to see. I like the idea of bringing that story into, you know, use, seeing it in words and in images because they don't always make that connection on their own. So I like that a lot. And at our school, you, as you know, we have an exemplary project right. called the Mosaic Project, which is a literacy-based project. Right. And our yeah. school is so international mm -hmm. that 
hearing everyone's stories. Now, art today is not just form alone. It's yeah. not yeah. just color or paint or... Right. It's the story. It's what's the context of mm -hmm. your artwork. What mm -hmm. is the story that you have to tell? Because not everyone may grow up to be an artist, but mm -hmm. everyone has a story to tell, right. whether Absolutely. it's visual or written. And so that's a big part of what Allison and I teach yeah. at Oak Ridge. Yeah. That, you know, and the other thing is, you know, when they're working, books become 3D. And when they're working with the books, I found... Um, it engages, it's not about drawing, like a lot of kids will tell me, oh, I can't draw, but right. you know, I, so can I, I still take your, that. and I'm like, I can't draw too, so I have this book, which I was showing you, the book about the goat, and I go to school visits, and the kids will tell me, that doesn't look like a goat, and I'm like, hey, I put horns on that dog, that's a goat, <laughs> and, and then they're like, I'm like, you don't have to be a great right. artist to make your own storybook, I mean, right. come on, you know, yeah. so I think that's the other Thing that it makes them feel okay you know I can tell my story if I just construct something in 3d mm -hmm. I don't have to draw I don't so we don't even use pencil. Yeah. you know we do a whole art workshop without using pencils well yeah. when school is so focused on SOLs yes and yeah. so it's so SOL driven and standard driven yeah it's the arts are a way that um, yeah. the students can get a visual and kinesthetic approach to mm -hmm. learning so even though mm -hmm. Allison and I both teach we both teach um, uh, science or incorporate social studies mm -hmm. into art or uh -huh. even literacy into art. Um, you know, this is another way that they can learn those core subjects, mm -hmm. but it's also oh, a right. way that they can express themselves yes. in a different way mm -hmm. than they do in the yeah. other classes. And that's what, that's what I like most about it. I think right. that that self-expression and being able to, for them to tell their story, and we, we use a lot of um, words in art that are also literacy words, mm -hmm. you know, like telling your story and using context clues and right. things like that. Um, so um, just for them to be able to express themselves in that medium, because we do have a lot of English language learners mm -hmm. too, and they yeah. don't necessarily, yeah. they're not able to express themselves in English or in class the way that they are in art right. or in music. Right. Yeah. Right. Their um, language is no barrier. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I find that to be really important for our students, I think. So then when you uh, design your um, the stuff in your class, the work you're going to do, yeah. do you think about that in mm -hmm. particular yeah. or do you just let it happen? Like, do you think that um, there are kids who uh, have trouble with language and yes. they might... Yes, it's a really big part of planning, I think. Well, one of the things that we do is we, because our um, school is an international neighborhood school, we like to make sure that we're bringing in artists from around the world mm -hmm. to expose them to maybe, mm -hmm. maybe artists from their culture um, that we're studying that have to that tie in with our mosaic project, right. or maybe um, we don't want them to just learn art history 101. We want right. them to learn you know, about what's going on. The culture, right. the, about the artist. Give them some context as to where the artist right. is coming from um, so that they can understand the art even better. And I, I find it interesting to just ask them what they see in the art because mm -hmm. they will pick up so much right. about the artist just right. by looking at the art and describing it. Um, but I think that we do have to take that into consideration. You know, what, where, what are their backgrounds? And there's so right. many in this area, there's so many different backgrounds. And working at two different schools, yeah. even just the two different schools are very different from one another because the populations are so different. And you do definitely have to take that into consideration when you're mm -hmm. planning what you're going to do with the kids. And the visuals that you have mm -hmm. for them so they can see, you know, what the action is, what you're going to be doing, what mm -hmm. is the form you're going to be using, what are the steps yeah. of the process. Mm -hmm. So really thinking about... Um, How they're going to learn it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. There's so many things that go in and you just think, we don't like, you know, you don't realize that there's so much in art and you just, yeah. you know, like people will tell me, oh, you're an artist. Oh, so you paint all day? And I'm like, <laughs> what? No. <laughs> it's like offensive to say that. <laughs> I know. And so then, you know, now that I've opened the studio, um, I, I met somebody the other day and they said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I have my own business. And they're like, oh, really? What is it about? And I'm like, Man, if I told this person I'm an artist, right. they would have said, "Oh yeah, okay, you paint all day." Right. <laughs> interesting. That's interesting. But I think I don't know. I mean, I think it might be this region that yeah. people don't. 
I don't know. Are you from here? Like, is it, do you feel that I, way? Well, I grew up. Lo, I grew up in Virginia, but okay. not because I don't know if locally. there's other places where people years. get artists and everybody's artsy. Or I don't know. Right. Yeah. Well, there's definitely. I mean, I think there definitely is a. Uh, there's a fast paceness here that right. I've noticed. <laughs> We've talked a lot about this. About. Are you also from I'm here? I'm from Missouri. Missouri. Okay. So, um, and it's a, not a big city in Missouri. It's the third largest city in Missouri, so not very big. Um, and I definitely noticed that it's very fast paced in this region and not a lot of people have time to slow down and like really think about things right. like that. Right. And I mean, when I moved here, my husband and I are always going to the museums because yeah. right. we didn't have museums. We don't have museums like that in Springfield, right. Missouri. So um, we would always go to the museums and really take time doing those things. Um, but I think it's hard for people to just slow down. So that's why I like the concept of your studio yeah. to just pause because I have to tell myself well, I'm doing too much sometimes. And that's what the kids need to do. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah. yeah. And, you know, um, that the whole idea was, I, I, you know, people would ask me when I, when I had my show last year that, oh, where can I learn that from you? And I'm like, sorry, I don't have my own space. You know, I just mm. teach at different locations. Mm -hmm. But when I have my studio, I'll let you know kind of thing. And then when I had, when I was, you know, figuring out what I'll do in the space, it's not like I can teach anybody to be an artist, mm -hmm. but you know I want people to know that everybody has a creative side and yeah. everybody's creativity has to be encouraged because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're going to be a doctor. You know, I mean, parents will come and tell me, "Oh, my daughter's a great artist. I want her to take your class." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "But you don't have to be a great artist. You right. know, you can be anything and still, you know, do creative stuff yeah. and you know do all of this." And I don't think a lot of people understand that. They think, "Oh, my daughter's good in art. She's going to grow up to be an artist." Right. Mm -hmm. No. That's a message you know? that I feel like we really tried to get across in the art room that you don't have to be the best artist right. to have fun creating art. And I think that that's the really big thing that we tried to get the kids. We want them to know that, you know, they can be an artist and, you know, they don't necessarily have to be the best artist. Right. You know, right. it's more about having fun yeah. doing what you're doing and not caring whether or not. I don't create art because it's. I want to sell it or because yeah. I do you it for somebody else. Yeah. Right. I do it because I enjoy it. It's yeah. therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the way that I express myself. And actually, I don't even like selling my art because I want to keep it. Because yeah. it's like a memory. <laughs> you know yes. what I mean? It's that's like so a memory special. from that time. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I think that that's really important, working with the kids, letting them know that, getting them, yeah. in, getting them in that mindset. And also getting them fearless as far as um, making mistakes and not yeah. being afraid. Yeah. You know, we always talk about yeah. being art smart and, <laughs> uh, you know, having the kids know that if you make a mistake, turn it into something else. And yeah. that goes, I think, far. Yeah. Far, problem yeah. solving. It's yeah. a problem solving yeah. skill. You yeah. know? And you know, the kids are learning that in school, and, but the parents ha didn't learn it in school and mm -hmm. haven't learned it. So I, I, because I'm not in a school environment, I see this thing. I'm like, oh, the kids totally get this. But the parents are like, what do you do? You're outside the lines. Or, you know, right. 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 And I'm like, this parent needs to chill. You know? Yeah. Right. And so what I do here, I call them pause sessions. And it's just mm -hmm. an art pause or a writing pause. But just take the time. Just sit down. Just yeah. chill and see what happens. Right. And if you don't like it, don't take it home. You know, if you like mm -hmm. it, take it home. What's, you know, I'm doing a, a painting class that somebody told me. I've never painted. In She was in a middle school. She said, we had to draw a pair. We had to take a picture out of a magazine and we all got the same picture and we had to draw it. Mm -hmm. And we did that all year. Oh. And like, one pair? That's boring. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then she says, at least that's how I remember it. Right. They weren't split. Well, their art teachers used to, a long time, they would do one project yeah. and then everybody would copy yeah. what that project was. Right. And today oh we God. teach in a different way. Just really, yeah. so, we teach in a different way. We Basically, we will pose a big idea um, or we'll pose a problem for them to solve. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then they have to reflect on that, mm -hmm. brainstorm on mm -hmm. it. So they go through that whole brainstorming process and then sketch, make sketches, make a plan. How are they yeah. going to get there? And then create an artwork so that every artwork is different. Yeah. Right. Because you don't want to, you want 
you want them to be original, just like right. in writing. You don't want there right. to be plagiarism. Right. Right. You right. don't want there to be, it, it's, it's the same to thing. Me. And yeah. if they don't learn it at elementary level, then they won't know for middle and high right. when it's really more important. Right. Um, but, you know, I mean, yes, cookie cutter art, they would all do really yeah. well mm -hmm. yeah. if they all copied, okay, now you draw a circle, yeah. now you draw an oval. Right. I mean, they would be successful products probably if they did step by step like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's no critical thinking there's, going on. Yeah. And, and, and what's the point? What's the point? That, you know? What's the like, point? And so I, I find yeah. it's really lucky that the kids today are learning it like that because I'm seeing the adults who didn't learn it like that right. mm -hmm. and they're the parents of these kids. So unfortunate. it's like unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, well, see, I think that uh, this is a very perfectionist society. Mm -hmm. And so Allison right. and I talk about this a yeah. lot, about how we really want to focus on process and yeah. not product, not yeah. end product. There's so many students that are worried uh, about really it. worried yeah. about because of either their parents yeah. pressuring mm -hmm. them. Yeah. They're worried that their work is not perfect. Yeah. And we want them to forget that. Yeah. And to and to like delve into to, the process. Right, and just, just have fun making, making the art it, because yeah. that's the important part. Right. That's that's yeah. what they need to know. That's where the, all of the critical thinking happens. Like, right. That's Ooh, we should. It's, it's, for the parents. We should. We <laughs> should. <laughs> that is so fun. We should have a PTA to yeah. that. Yeah, because they need so, to understand that they that to. these little kids, they if they want them to develop artistically mm -hmm. and to feel free and to keep that. Yeah. Kids have a beautiful freedom. Don't stifle it. Yeah, they yeah. can't yeah. stifle it. And unfortunately, product oriented. Um, Society. pressures <laughs> and they are are not good for the kids so yeah. Yeah. this lady was you know we started with just yellow paint when we started to paint and I said okay this is just a plain acrylic paint this is paint with gesso I mean with the medium and this is paint with medium and water and mm -hmm. just see what they feel like you know just make um, rectangles or whatever mm -hmm. patches and she started doing something and then she's doing a rectangle and then it became like this and like that and then she's like oh, I made a banana. And I'm like, <laughs> immediately, yeah. it has to look like something. <laughs> I didn't tell her yeah. anything. It's play. Yeah. She played. Like, you, that's, yeah. There you go. You're already just you know, taking it to whatever place you want right. it to. Yeah. And it doesn't have to look like anything. But if it does, if it reminds you of something, that's fine. But that's all we did. And then mm -hmm. they said, oh, what happens if I mix red? And I'm like, OK, I'll go find the red. You know, yeah, and try it. Just try Experiment. It. Yeah, the experimentation is we so call, important. We call those happy accidents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, because they're, they're, they're made with play. And yeah. so much art is made through play. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. when do the kids get a chance to play today? Right. Because seriously, Absolutely. they have yeah. to go to soccer Absolutely. and piano mm -hmm. and whatever else, yeah. you know, right after that. <laughs> and you can see the stress in their eyes, and they need yeah. a chance to play. Yeah. And I think that's why they love coming to art, I though. I think so. Like coming yeah. to art and music and PE, those are the things that they enjoy the most because it's the time to play. And yeah. that's what we really are trying to focus on a lot, slowing down and, you know, getting the kids to where they can just experiment and play right. with the materials and yeah. see what it's like if you mix this and this together see yeah. what happens yeah rather than being maybe. told mix rather than being told to mix purple you know right. say what happens when you mix these together and letting them experiment with it because that's the most fun i think for them so seeing it happen yeah. right in front of them so so you guys have a fun job <laughs> yeah we like it we do <laughs> I used to be a graphic designer too uh -huh. for about oh 10 God. to 12 years uh -huh. and I used to do annual reports too oh my and God. so when I had children I ended up going back to school and getting my masters at um, the MAT program at George Mason yeah. and once I was playing with the kids and doing art with the kids and I was having so much fun doing right. it um, you know I decided to go back instead of going back to the office yes. and uh, yes, because you know instead of making art what other people want me to make mm -hmm. making art that inspires me yeah. and having the kids do that too and share in that joy yeah. but you know i think it's lucky to have had that experience though because sometimes it's really interesting to make something for somebody else mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's about what they want mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. it's what they need it's a solution for their problem right it is very interesting because when i went to art school i studied applied art in india and we used to see the fine art schools, the students, mm. they'd be sitting on the lawn, you know, with their chai and smoking. <laughs> and like, this guy's in school, what are they doing? 
to it. And they'd say like, oh, we paid what we want. And we're like, man, we never get to pay what we want. You know? And so for in my head, that was the big distinction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we went into advertising. So it was like, yeah, for, you know, did that for a long time. Mm-hmm. So this is like, and, and now what, you know, when I'm teaching um, groups um, of kids or after school or whatever, I, my kids are eight and 12. So I teach up till age 12 because I know mm. that kid. Right. <laughs> I, I've never taught a 14 year old. Right. I'm like, I don't know 14 year olds. <laughs> right. So I'm just thinking in my head, these are my kids and how would I teach my kids? Mm-hmm. How is it for you guys? Do y'all... You have well, I have children. I have a nine-year-old and a 14-year-old, uh-huh. and it's funny that you say that because I, I did the same thing intentionally. I became an oh. elementary art teacher because yeah. I knew that age. Yeah. I felt I knew it, and right. um, now he's a middle, he was a middle schooler. Now he's in high school, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I plan to stay in that age range where I know the age. Right. Yeah. So, oh, so I'm not the only no, one. No, no, you're <laughs> not. <laughs> well, then you know, you kind of know the subculture. You know yeah. what's in and what's... And it's interesting because you can use those to your advantage when you're yeah. teaching because you can mm-hmm. you can use them to engage the children yeah. um, in class. Maybe you pull something up that's current yeah. to yeah. inspire a lesson. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't have kids, um, but I just had a calling <laughs> to teach art and I I didn't actually pick elementary until I was doing my student teaching all throughout school I thought oh I'm gonna teach high school mm-hmm. and I like high school just because I had good experiences in high school art right. That's but so I ended up picking elementary because I liked how the kids just created freely mm-hmm. and wow. they and I even really mm-hmm. enjoy working with the younger groups of kids like I teach a lot of pre-k through second grade Uh and they just it just flows so naturally it's inspiring for me to just watch them create Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's just like where does that come from it's just incredible to me and do you like take notes and then go back and well i don't like well i just i mean it's just fun to watch them because it reminds me that i it reminds me what i love about art you know just being able to take the time to do it and get into it and they get so mad when we have to stop and clean up oh. it's like i don't want to make you i promise it's not me it's just what we have we and just need two hours yeah <laughs> right, right but um but they just seeing them in the creation process and it just comes so naturally at that age that it's just inspiring and it's mm-hmm. incredible to watch many times i've gone home from work and started doing art because yeah. i was inspired by a student yeah like, they are inspiring. Yeah. Did, you tell them that? Did you tell them that? I have that? told them. Oh and, you know, God. it's they're, they're a beautiful artist. They amaze yeah. me. Yeah. Every time, that I think is the biggest thrill as a teacher is to watch and see what they make um, and what and how they're all different. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, and, and what they're thinking yes. and what... Uh, the little, like, aha right, moments when they right. make a connection, their eyes go like this. <gasps> yeah. And they're like... Whoa. See, and when they're in it's junior like high, when they get to middle school, they're yeah. in dawning realism, which is a stage of artistic oh. development. development. Yeah. So when they're in dawning realism, then they start to tighten up yeah. And, yeah. and go, it, it has to be real. real. Yeah. It has to be real. Yeah. So and that's why this is a nice stage. Of, like the, the people who've told me I can't draw. Right. right. They're, they're all probably 11. Yes. So if they, what so happens, funny, they're adults yeah. now, but they remember that time. That's what the they stage they're in. That's what the they say in. is if they get to, if they can get through age 11 feeling free and feeling mm-hmm. confident about their art, which is what our job is to do, mm-hmm. then they can go into middle school and feel confident as an artist and yeah. keep going. But, yeah. you know, if they feel scared yeah. and... They don't and, feel good about it. Yeah. If they don't like the artistic process and they're they worried about they're how bad, it looks, or, yeah. then... They don't get past that, and it becomes back harder. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not something that they enjoy. That I didn't know that. I didn't know there was a word for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That because I just hear these people telling me, "Oh, you know, it was middle school, and then I never painted again." You know, yeah, you know, my teacher told me, "You're no good." Right. Oh, I, t- like, I hate hearing that. Like, I hate like, hearing that. My husband has stories like that. He does. Yeah, <laughs> like he had a ceramics teacher that said to him one time. You just can't help it, can you? And I was like, oh my God. I was so upset about it. Because awful. I know. Because he was, he enjoyed working with clay and he enjoyed what he was doing and he really was trying hard. But he's got big clumsy hands and, you know, he's Aww. not, you know, really extremely artistically inclined, although he's in artistic in other ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's Oh, we just, should have a clay thing here. Oh, and he should, so he should fun. lead it. I he should just do it. <laughs> he should be able to do it his Come way. Come on here. It's fun. 
Right. It is. It's you really know? fun. And um, it's just terrible when you hear things like yeah. that. Well, everyone has different fine motor abilities. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what, that's what, that's what, why I feel so passionate about um, process versus product mm -hmm. uh -huh. is that yeah. one child yeah. can do maybe his personal best yeah. and it may not look great yeah. but that's his personal best yeah. it's a it's a win. and that's where yeah. i don't and you know you get the people going by looking at the art going you know that looks that looks okay <laughs> uh, yeah. i think or or that looks fantastic yeah but they're not taking into account the child yeah. and that the child has maybe did their personal best yeah. when they did that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I, I just, we feel, I know we both feel very passionate about yeah. the process. Yeah. You know, I think that comes from like, I, um, you know, you're talking about museums. I'm a docent at the mm -hmm. Smithsonian's Free and Cycler. And I think that might come from adults viewing art a lot yeah. mm -hmm. so they view art and they say oh this is good and this is not good oh this is mm -hmm. a famous person right and his right. style right and it doesn't necessarily translate when you come no. home when you're looking at your kids work it doesn't because there's no like when you're looking at a piece of artwork you have to have context to it and you know you don't know what the kids were thinking about that day right or you don't yeah. know what problem they were trying to solve yeah. or you know maybe there was they were trying to erase something and they accidentally tore the paper and they tried to figure out how to cover it up that's a that's a huge step for them and that's a really big important oh God, thing for them the to do <laughs> I know I know I'm like that's what we do as artists right. so yeah. that's great that you're you know when they do that that's what we try to encourage them if they make a mistake we don't throw it away no yeah. we say let's figure out how to fix it we'll think of something you know? a lot of artists yeah. we yeah. we all do yeah, that we're always doing yeah. that yeah we're always trying to figure out how to fix it <laughs> i was teaching a, a workshop yesterday and there was some coloring um frames that the kids had to color and do day of the dead memory books we mm -hmm. were doing so this little kid four years old she was uh, coloring it in and she took four color pencils in her hand and was doing such detailed work and i'm like how old is the kid? The mom mm -hmm. said she's four. Wow. I said, you know, she's really, and I use color pencils mm -hmm. at this, usually when I don't use crayons or markers. And I said, look how she's put in four colors in that little space. Mm -hmm. um, do you let her play with color pencils? And she said, no, I have crayons for her. Why? I said, just look at it. And when she looked, she's like, oh my God, in that tiny space, she's put four colors. Mm -hmm. There's no way you could do that with crayons or with markers, of course, mm -hmm. it'll be much mm -hmm. more. So she went, and then, you know, there were so many people and I was um, going from one table to another. And then when she left, she came, made a point and came to me and said, thank you so much. I'm going to go and buy her color pencils. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh yeah, do that. Because she is completely different mm -hmm. yeah. from a four year old. You know, she had, and she just sat there so long, mm -hmm. carefully. And I was like, you sure? Really focused. Four? <laughs> no, no, really focused. <laughs> My four year old is like, whoa, whoa, right. Whoa. Well, it's exposure, yeah. you know, it's exposure yeah. to media and that's what other, I think schools need to take that into consideration yeah. too, is that, is that, you know, one child may have had exposure to the material yeah. more, more than more. the other. And that, that, I mean, that has a lot to do with, um, when you think about people that see people that are gifted or, or yeah. talented and gifted, yeah. sometimes it's just that they've had a lot of exposure. Of yeah. Yeah. Um, know. And so... Some children just need that media yeah. or just need that material they, and time yeah, to they, develop. Yeah, and they need it handed to them because they right. may have only used crayons or yeah. markers before. And, you know, right. having that other material, it's a whole other experience. They've never cut. Yeah, They've never, it's a whole other experience yeah. with another material. And, you know, also, I don't know, I think typically when they're given crayons and uh, coloring pages at home, it's because nobody's sitting with them and watching them do it. It's right. like, okay, honey, you do this and I'll be right back. Right. You know, like, mm -hmm. right. fix dinner or something. Right. And we are not watching what they're doing. Mm. But as teachers, or, you know, we get to watch them. And yeah. then we're like, oh, she's ready for, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the parents don't see that and don't suggest those things. Right. So mm -hmm. it's really lucky that they get that time with the... I am yeah, so the grateful that they do. That's one of the things I love about it. All mm -hmm. the different materials we get to use. Yeah. I loved dabbling in all kinds of different media and so this allows me to do that and play and experience it and pass it on so mm -hmm. fun with yeah. the kids you know to be able to pass it on to another generation and and let them explore it too so and I <laughs>